Welcome back, everybody, to MMA Underground, presented by Yankee and the Brit. I'm Jay. He's Maddie. Today, we have a special guest for you, Scrapyard's own Dana White, Steve Higuera, <laughs> also known as Fire Chicken. Thanks for coming on. We are so grateful that you gave us your time. Hey, I really appreciate you guys having me on. So, big things coming up with Scrapyard. It's Well, you got big fight coming up for charity with Jay Gottam and Jordan Harrington, but even bigger for Maddie and I, really excited, the Virginia Invasion, Scrapyard going over to fight in the OG yard. Yes, sir. So we, like you mentioned, those two things, we got we got those coming up. Um, one thing we haven't touched on too much is the, uh, the one-year anniversary of our branch. That will be in July, and hopefully we'll have some uh, – Special stuff going on in July we'll talk about later. But, yes, so first up is this weekend. Uh, we've got a lot of fights lined up, and uh, I'm, I'm super excited about it. You guys know about a few of them. You're in the group. You see me posting the fights. So, um, yeah, big, big event coming up. Um, any fights in particular you guys are interested in? I know the Jay Godham fight for sure. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I just watch you put it out. I watch them. I love these fighters, and I get to the point where I don't even think about oh, I need to fight and see this guy fight this person or whatever because I'm never let down. Never. We just watch them all. We're not actually bothered about who like comes out. We just watch <laughs> them all. But of course, the Jake, uh, the Jake Gottam and Jordan Harrington fight is the one that's probably got most people's attention and probably like probably has our attention a little bit the most and that's for the the good cause behind it as well yeah that that is a that is probably one of our top fights right there you know if not the top fight of this event um, which one are you most excited for or or uh, like what which matchups do you look at and go i'm really happy to see this fight i can't wait so um what i'll do is i got the list in front of me and i'll touch on some of the people that are fighting, if they're fighting new people, I won't go into it very much, but I'll just say, hey, this guy's fighting, this guy's fighting. And then I'll go over the, the people that you know. So the first one, and this this kind of happened by accident. Um, we had a tournament set up for the 170-pound kickboxing tournament, right? Uh, last month we started it. We had the African, Crazy Legs, Samaritan, King Four Dub. So we had a whole bunch of people in there. Um, people won their fights in advance to the next month, which was going to, which is this month. Um, we needed, uh, somebody to step in and cover for, uh, an open spot that, that we didn't have filled to make it an even tournament. And a guy, a guy volunteered to step in. So we had, then we had our even amount, right? So he was going to step into the second leg of the tournament. Um, Due to unfortunate circumstances, uh, the African actually had an injury from last ter uh, last month, and he won't be fighting. So I had to take the replacement guy that I said was going to fight the African, and I, I basically pulled that whole fight. Um, that was going to be the winner of that fight, got to fight the winner of this other fight. But since those two people are gone, I have... Um, Crazy Legs versus, um, ah, man, you know, I can't tell you. I can't tell you who the other person is yet because I haven't released the fight yet. That's all right. I love it. It's a teaser. <laughs> Everybody, go check out um, Street Beef Scrapyard on Facebook. You'll be able to see it, and I will drop the link in the description so you guys can find that. You can find their YouTube channel so you can watch the fights we're talking about as they – come out on youtube well that fight will probably be out um friday the one that i'm the, the the winner is moving on to fight saturday so basically what i'm getting at is the winner of of that fight that i've released friday will be fighting crazy legs and it will be for the title saturday so our first ever kickboxing title that's very cool um obviously you guys know Jay Godin versus Showtime, boxing match. Super pumped about that. Uh, two high-talented fighters. Um, man. He's called himself Showtime when he's going up against Jay Godin as well. 
Yes. Like the most Showtime fighter of all. And he's got, like, you know, he's called himself Showtime. Well done, Jordan. Love that man. I hope he puts on a show. <laughs> <laughs> um, Preacher's son, who fought Jay Gotham, is also coming back. Oh, boy. And he's fighting Epic Tan. I'm excited Fantastic. to see Preacher's son fight again. Yes. And that is some seriously good technique and a lot of good talent in Preacher's son there. Epic Tan has been on a he's been on a rampage and got a lot of talent. This is going to be a good one. Excited to see it. Be a good fight. <laughs> um. So, do you guys know who? Uh, I'll tell you. Dirty Devil is one of the most experienced street beast fighters of all times. He's from. He fought in every branch of street beast, past and present branches, except for the scrapyard. He just fought in Strelka a week ago, the Russian backyard fighting. Um, and he is fighting Shrugs Saturday. Man. <laughs> Come to complete the set. He's here to complete the set. Yes. That'll be all of them. <laughs> he'll be, uh, I believe he'll be the only one that's done it. Yeah, and then he's obviously, he's been... It's been over in the Russian backyard fighting thing, and I mean that that must be hardcore. That must be a hardcore place to go fight. Well, they did it in America, but it, it's it's um, Strelka is the Russian based fighting branch, and they've typically done their events in Russia, I believe. But most recently, they've moved over to America and done some fights here. And um, I think Kilo, uh, AJ, a couple people from the main branch have fought on that same event with these guys. So, um, yeah, and uh, Dirty Devil stepped in and fought too. So he got a, I think, a 15-second knockout. <laughs> right, so we'll be definitely looking out for that one then. Fantastic. Okay, uh, next we got Gaio fought Golden Hands twice, and he's fighting Turco in a boxing match. That's what I love, too, is that it's not just MMA. There's boxing, there's kickboxing. I've seen BJJ. It's just all around mixed martial arts, but some of them just in their natural form. It's pretty awesome to watch. Just even going through just the YouTube um, channel, my wife can look at me and like, are we going to go get dinner? And I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And I'll be like 45 <laughs> minutes late because I get too sucked into video after video. Yeah, yeah, that can happen. Um, uh, Solo versus Kevin for my T. <laughs> that's <laughs> gonna be a that's good the one. best thing ever. It is. I can't get enough of Solo. I just, and and Kevin seems like such a personality. Well, he must be if he's called himself that. I mean, like, great name, man. Great name. <laughs> Did you um overtime hustling gave me uh so Kevin and and Solo both submitted to me some um some videos and uh overtime hustling put together a collaboration of those those videos and I put it on our channel this morning so you can go check that out if you haven't seen it yet but it's basically these guys talking back and forth kind of uh some creative uh creative personalities in there um some of their creativity I should say yeah, shout out to Overtime Hustler Magazine, too. Those guys are awesome. I love those guys. Yep. OTH. <laughs> um, all right. I'll just go through these ones really quick. Turkish Assassin is fighting. Brickhouse is fighting. Um, we got a, a rematch between Black Panther and Freedom Fighter. They just fought. Um, Ultra just fought. He's fighting this month. UK fought a couple months ago. He's fighting twice this month. Um, Meta World Peace fought two months ago. He is fighting this month. Dragon Spirit fought twice two months ago. He's fighting this month. Um, Crazy Hands is actually, I think he's related to Crazy Legs. Yeah, uh, I feel like that makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> so we haven't seen him yet, but um, I just thought I'd throw that one in there. Uh, UK versus the Samaritan in an MMA match. So that's going to be interesting. El Guapo just fought. 
last month versus Turtle. Um, Simo MMA. <laughs> we got a guy named Shitbird fighting. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's just epic. See, the personalities are electric in the scrapyard. Right. I I have to agree. Um, Mr. Rooks fought last month. He's fighting again. Um, Hummingbird. Oh, yeah. That's going to be one to watch right there, Hummingbird. So then there's some other people matched up with each other that, that haven't fought out here. But that's the base. That's the basis for the uh, for the event so far. That's really cool. And it's always fun to watch people in their first time out there because I always think to myself, and maybe I'm an asshole for thinking this, but I look at them and I go, I wonder how nervous they are. And I'm always looking at the ner- and I, I and everybody's got to have some sort of nerves, but you never see it even in their first time. I love it. I always, I pick out, I try to watch that shit in the USC or one, everything. I'm always like, oh, dude looks a little nervous, right? Because it can do something with the fight and your fighters look more excited than nervous every time they walk in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they're feeling the same, the same type of butterflies that those guys in the UFC are feeling, but um, everybody's different. You know, everybody handles those butterflies different. I, I think it helps you out, but um, I think the scrapyard has a lot to do with it though. Like, if you hear the people in the brat background on the videos or we get like, we're lucky enough to talk to preacher son and Jay got gash and all of buddy V it's, it's such a family event that I think that actually helps those guys like calm down, get in there. And I think they forget that they're really on camera getting film fighting and they're just having a good time. Yeah. It's like, they have no idea that a hundred thousand people are about to watch them on YouTube. Like that, that's what would freak me out. That's what would be going through my head the entire time. Like a hundred thousand people might watch me get knocked the fuck out. Like that's what, like, (laughs) I I don't think think, I would handle the pressure. Well, I think that's why a lot of people do this though, because they, they have the potential of being seen by so many people. Um, You know, through uh, you can go and you can do the amateur fighting route. And um, and you can get seen by a couple hundred people at some shows, maybe a casino fight. Um, but at the end of the day, you can't beat this kind of exposure. Look at – I can use Pookie and versus Brickhouse as an example. Okay, I'm bringing that one up because actually Preacher Son and Jay Godden passed up that video for most views – but then all of a sudden, people started watching that video again from eight months ago, and it shot way past. It's up to almost five hundred thousand views. That's so crazy. So one day, Jay, one day, one day, maybe this next <laughs> one. Will get there. Well, also a good example of that is um, Shinigami's head kick to detail. Oh, one good knockout, and you are blowing up on the internet. You're on the Pat McAfee show. You know what I mean, like. True, true. Um, look at look at our um, our fight between um, True Grit and Arm and Hammer. That one's hit three point three point six million views. Now that head kick didn't happen, you know, fifteen seconds into the fight, but it's it's still. I I would say that that head kick was just as beautiful. Right. I'm just saying, I think part of what helped Shinigami was details comments before the fight started when he said, if you don't know me, you'll now you will. And then he got knocked out real quick. I think that helped the skyrocket of that whole thing. But all <laughs> it the takes outfit. is one fight. You're right. These guys get on there in one fight. Next thing you know, you get a lot of play on the internet. People start to know who you are. And if you've got any skill at all, maybe you end up somewhere. Yeah, sure. merchandise and stuff like that as well. Like, there's a lot of reasons to go fight in Street Beefs, and it's gone. That's why you're starting to see a different caliber of fighter as well. Like, when you watch the earlier Street Beefs, it is literally just people scrapping to quash beef and stuff like that. But now it's you actually get a good caliber of fighter as well and some seriously talented people. 100%. I agree. Yep. So. Not to just rush past it, but I am so excited. I got to ask you about the Virginia invasion. 
Maddie and I have pumped an idea like to everybody we've ever talked to that this has to happen. And now that you made it happen, oh, I am so excited to watch those fights come out. And I know you said you know a couple of them already. So if you're willing to tell everybody, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, so I got to give credit to the person that actually made this happen. Um, so right after the... Um, the title fight last month at, uh, at our last event, Doughboy walked up to me and said, I want to go fight in Virginia and I want to bring you with me to corner me. That's how this whole thing started. <laughs> and I go, yes, yes, I will go with you and corner you. And, and then I said, you know what, maybe we should get some other people to come along because, Hey, you know what? We're going over there. Why, why not make a, why not? get a uh, entourage of, of scrapyard fighters to come on out. And so um, Viking Warrior. So I'll, I'll tell you who's all going. Shout out to Doughboy. Shout out Making to Doughboy. <laughs> so first, Crazy Legs. I got to mention you first because I forgot you last time. Sorry, bro. Crazy Legs is coming out. The Viking Warrior is coming out. Illuminate the State fought for us twice. He's coming out. He's flying up from Cali. Um, I'm obviously going out there. Um, Doughboy, Turco, Turkish Assassin, and Shrugs, are, we're all fighting. And then you got Buddy V, Anomaly, and Tony, our uh, Beamer representative, is coming with us. And Overtime Hustling Magazine is coming with us, too. Shout out to OTH. Look at you following them over there. That's awesome. Um, now, the fights that we have lined up so far. Um, originally, Doughboy was going to fight Menace Mike. Um, unfortunately, Menace Mike um, injured his hand fighting in the last Street Beaks event. He has a broken hand right now. So we wanted to try to find somebody for Doughboy. That would be um, a good match, talent-wise, and that, that people would know. And we found Beach would be perfect. So we reached out to Beach, got a hold of Sunshine, made it happen. So Beach versus Doughboy. That's kind of, I'll say that's like the Scrapyard Invasion's main event. And that's an MMA fight? That is an MMA fight. Yes, sir. Um. Next up, we got, I would say, our our top contender for roughly the 185 to 200-pound range in boxing, and that's uh, Viking Warrior. And uh, we figured somebody that is getting a lot of attention right now in Street Beefs is Fair Play. Um, yes, sir. He's got, he's, got the, he's got the outfit. He's got the talent. The personality, and I think that that matchup is just pure gold. So, and the last match that we have 100% confirmed is an exhibition fight, and that's me versus A Train. Yeah, and, man, uh, it's to be fighting. Sorry, what? Are you excited to be out there fighting rather than just cornering somebody where you're really excited to get yourself in the OG yard as well? I am. And you know what? Like, I wasn't really, I wasn't 100% planning on fighting, but it kind of just happened that A Train went on his Facebook, or maybe it was Street Beast, and he said, Hey, I think I'm going to fight again. You know, so obviously all these people start in, like, Hey, I want to fight you. I want to fight you. Or, you know, maybe so i just um i talked to a train sent him messages quite a bit you know we've talked back and forth we actually got a lot in common um got no no bad blood or no beef with him um i respect him as a as a fighter and uh i messaged him and said hey man um you know i'm i'm trying to get back in shape and too and um this whole covid thing hit me just as hard as you and what do you think about doing a, a boxing match? And he's like, yeah, yeah. So we kind of went back and forth agreeing on on glove glove sizes and all that stuff. And and that's where we're at. So yep, we're gonna we're gonna throw some throw some mitts on the uh, 
June fifth show. Some hard sparring, as I saw it posted. Hard sparring, yes. That's exciting. How long has it been since you fought out in Virginia when you fought out there last time? December 2018. Okay, so it's been a minute going back to the OG yard. Now, were you in the original yard? I was it. Not only was I in the original yard, but I was in the original yard before they even did fighter intros. Like, you didn't get time to say something to the camera. You just thought. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because that yard doesn't exist anymore, right? It, it, I mean, it doesn't exist in the sense that um, that we would use it in a, as an event because right. the person that owned, owned that place doesn't live there anymore, so. Okay. That's like, yeah, because I don't see, if you go back to the old Street Me fights on YouTube, you see it, and then you no longer see it again. So I was just like, but I thought I saw you comment in a post on Facebook or something that you fought there. So I had to ask if that, if I remembered that right. So yes, I, I believe the A train, that was the last place he fought too. So do you guys have a, a set exact date that you guys are going out there? Um, yeah. So um, some of us aren't going to go out until the Friday before the event. Um, but me, Tony, um, Doughboy, maybe one or two other people are going to be showing up on Thursday. And when's the event for? Saturday. Um, what's the date, though? Oh, June 5th is the date of the fight, yeah. Just in case, every I didn't remember, and so everybody knows that after June 5th, <laughs> they can keep watching uh, YouTube to catch these fights as they get released. Yeah. So I'm going to be going out to Neutral Corner on Friday, too. Um, there's a lot of people I want to meet. Maybe I can get a little bit of sparring in before the fight. Um, so it'd be a cool experience. Yeah, it looks like a pretty cool gym. Yeah. So after the whole invasion happens, Maddie and I are hoping this whole trend just kicks up and all the street beefs come together at some point. But I can't tell you when I saw that post about the Virginia invasion, I literally was in the living room watching TV with my wife and yelled, fuck yes. And she's like, <laughs> what? And I'm like, street beefs is good. OG and street beef scrapyard. And she was like, hold on, you got to explain this to me. But yeah, <laughs> I even yelled, fuck yes, right in our living room. So we called it, we called it, we called it, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, finally happened, finally happened. Then we're going to need, so we've got Virginia invasion coming up and then you're going to need King of the West Coast with the uh, scrapyard and the West Coast going against each other. And with Texas Anarchy popping up now as well, we'll, we'll see what happens with that as well. Yeah. You know, I, in my opinion, this is, this is a huge deal because we've got, I don't know, uh, 10 to 15 people that are hopping on planes and flying over there. And these are like our biggest, our bigger names out here. And we're fighting a lot of their bigger names. I think that it's, it's huge. And I a hundred percent agree. Like the trend should continue because it brings the different branches together. I would love for a group to come on out to the scrapyard for a month and, um, you know, set them up with our guys. That would be, that would just be completely awesome. <laughs> Yeah, and the whole idea that street beef is just growing and growing and growing, and the more people who find out about it are like, oh, shit, I hear that. I see comments on some of our posts like, I didn't even know this existed. I love this. So the fact that people are starting to learn about it more and more, because I remember the first time I ever stumbled across street beefs, and I was like, this shit is awesome. <laughs> like, So, and then the fact that every chapter is just a little bit different makes the excitement of it all too yeah it does um every every chapter's got its own pizzazz um makes them unique so i i hope all the chapters keep that individuality and um and just you know stick with it but all right i'm gonna ask you again like i asked last time fire chicken can we go buy them shirts somewhere um, yes, 
So, well, I got a Cobra Kai shirt on right now. Right. I'm looking at the <laughs> scrapyard behind your head, but yeah. Oh, these ones. So if you want to purchase one of those, Martin Rubio is supposed to be the guy that, that has those. Um, try messaging him. What I can try to do is I can get a hold of him and try to get an order. And uh, then maybe I can send out to people or whatever. But he's the centralized hub for all the merch. So he's, he's the guy that handles that. Um, and I would just say, shoot Martin Rubio uh, uh, instant message on Facebook. Sounds good. Yeah, because uh, every time I see you out in the scrapyard with the scrapyard shirt, I'm like, I need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> So with everything going on coming up Saturday, you got to be really excited for that. You're not too far out from the Virginia invasion, like big things coming for the scrapyard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think our, our game plan for the scrapyard is to just maintain, to keep doing what we're doing. And we've got it to the point, the venue, the camera work, the editing, I feel like that's all exactly the way that, that I want it to look. And now we just have to put out fights every month, new stuff, new fights, people coming out, all that new content. Do you must get a ton of fighters contacting you too, huh? To like fight out there. Yeah. And it's, um, it's grown in popularity in probably the last couple months. I don't know if that's due to, the weather getting better or, or what, but um, we, we have been getting a lot more people contacting us. So in the future, we might have to start limiting the amount of, of fights per month just to be able to, just to be able to throw the event. I mean, we're already last month, there were a lot of people out here and there's going to be even more this month. So we got to keep um, the surrounding people happy too. So they don't try to shut everything down. Yeah, and provide you... the same quality of content as well. You can't provide the same quality if you're just trying to put on too much quantity all the time. So I think that's a good and it's a good thing to have. And you guys just need to keep on keeping on, is what keep we say on, over keep here. On. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you choose which fighters though? Do you like get training tape if they don't have anything? How do you know? I mean, like, it's gotta be hard to figure out like, okay, we're gonna let this guy fight or well. I think it's probably harder for like the West coast branch right now because they have so many more people wanting to fight for them. Um, right up until now, it's, it's kind of like, well, we've had enough to do fights. Um, last month, I think we had 18 or 19 fights. We're looking at close to 30 this month, but it's getting to the point where I don't want any more than probably 25, 30 fights. So I'm going to have to limit it and I'll probably look at the people that are the bigger names. You know, they're going to have priority people from different branches. They're going to have priority to come out. Um, and I'm not going to let people sit on the sidelines month after month. I'm going to try to get, try to work them in. So if they signed up the month before, you know, I can probably get them in the next month. Very cool. That's just exciting for everybody. And then, they get a chance, but it's smart to keep your big names and your electric personalities out there. Like I said, I think I, I told you before we started, Buddy V is electric. I could feel his energy through the um, <laughs> through the camera on the interview we did with him. Jay got him put on a WWE style promo against Jordan Harrington on the podcast. Just electric personalities. And then you get guys like, um, preacher son who I wouldn't say is an electric personality but just such a nice guy talking uh -huh. to Gash was amazing you guys just have some personalities out there that I think really going to help fuel this and just keep it going and everybody's yep. really happy to talk to us which is always a plus in our eyes as well yeah love you guys for that <laughs> you guys put on a good show so they're really willing to get on here and talk so excellent thank you so much man well, thank you so much for giving us your time again and talking about the Virginia invasion because Maddie's probably sick of hearing me talk about it to him. So now I got to talk about it with you. Maybe it'll like hold tide me over till the time comes. <laughs> right on. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Um, I always enjoy uh, 
enjoy talking to you guys and what you guys are doing for the scrapyard and street beef side. I really enjoy the hell out of that too. Well, we appreciate it. We love you guys and I can't get enough of it. Sorry to step on you, Maddie. What were you saying? I was just saying, thank you. I was just doing the classic British thing of just saying thank you after everything. Yeah. You guys are so fucking polite. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. You can check us out on YouTube, Facebook, other podcasting platforms. One world, one love. Deuces. Cheerio. All right, check it out.